Hey everyone, it's Talia here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I have a bunch of Coco and Claire new releases that released in November. They've actually released a lot of new gel polish colors lately and these are just a handful of some of the colors. So I'm going to go through and swatch all of them, give you guys my opinions on them and what I think you could do with them. I'm also going to show you guys a little bit of a tutorial using some watercolors and some of the colors in the recent launch to create this pink poinsettia nail design. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get started. First color up is number 182 and it is called Shimmering Jasmine. I feel like this shade is the perfect silver metallic color. I did find this one to go on kind of sheer though when I was doing my thin coats and I ended up doing three coats to build this one up to where I really liked it. But I do think that this would be a staple silver collection to have in your collection because you can pair it with so many different colors. It's also a fantastic color for winter and like snowflake nails. And 183 is called Now What? And it is a gunmetal silver, so it's a little bit darker than the last one that I showed you guys. I think this one would be great for winter because of how dark the shade is on it. And okay, so I, I did apply three coats on this one, but I think two would have been fine. I feel like I was just being a little bit generous when I was applying the last coat just to kind of see if I could get it a bit darker. So I think two would be great. One eighty five is one of my favorite ones out of all of these ones that I'm going to share with you. This one is called Frosted Fig, and it is like a metallic mulberry silver wine type of color. I think this is just such a pretty color, perfect for fall, perfect for winter time. This one went on beautiful in two coats. One eighty six is called Find the Magic, and it is a purple, silver, metallic type of shade. I could see this color working really well for like an icy winter scene nail art design, and this one went on really nicely in two coats. Two eleven is called Everlasting, and it is a teal with iridescent gold glitters and this color is stunning it's one of those colors that I think would work great for mermaid nails ocean nails winter nails I did have to apply this one in three coats though I do think this one would be a good option to layer over top of different colors though because it goes on a little bit sheer 216 called Grace is another one of my favorites in this little lineup that I'm going to share with you and it is a light pink with gold glitters in it. The only thing I noticed about this one though is it applies kind of gritty. I don't find it to apply super smooth. I think it's a beautiful color. It only took two coats to get it to look really nice but when you're applying it it doesn't go on super smooth because of the glitters that are in it. 217 Captured in Poems is an iridescent bluey purple periwinkle type of color. This one went on beautifully in two thin coats. I think this color would also be a great color not only for winter but all year round and because it has kind of like a purple and a blue hue to it you could pair it with so many different colors. 218 Heart and Soul is a gray, pinky, purple, iridescent color. It goes on really nice and easy in two coats, and I find this color to be so unique. I love the tone of this. Sometimes we see these iridescent colors done with like whites a lot, but not so much like a gray like this one. I really like the shade of this. 219 Opal Oasis is your perfect 
opal type of shade. We've got that nice see-through white type of background and then your iridescent shimmer to it as well. It's got like a bluey purple shimmer to it. This color I tried to layer up in three different layers and I had a really hard time getting it opaque. So I think this would be another great option to layer over top of any color. So it would change the look of whatever you layered it over top of, but we are actually gonna use this one as the background in the tutorial. 225 Perfectly Foolish is a very concentrated gold sparkle, but it has like a green tinge to it. So I felt that this sparkle went on really nicely in just one coat, and I did go in with a second one to layer it up. But the nice thing about this glitter is I didn't find that I needed to use the sponge technique to make it really concentrated. It went on really easy. The glitter stayed where I put it, and I really like that about this particular glitter. $2.29 I See You is a bright medium purple and it is a super concentrated color. It went on really nicely in one coat. You guys saw me demo it in the last video that I had posted uh, using some of the CJS foils and it went on just beautiful in one nice coat. Uh, but I did go in with a second one just to cover up any imperfections or anything. I don't really know if that was necessary though because it is super concentrated. The last color that I have to share with you is 230 and it is called Fall in Love. It is an iridescent pink, purple, blue type of color and this is another one that we're gonna use for the tutorial. I could just see this color being used in like a really nice pink winter design. I just think it's so pretty and it went on beautifully in two thin coats. This is just a small collection of what Coco and Claire has been releasing lately. If you guys find these videos helpful and you wanna see more of them on the other colors that they have, definitely comment below and let me know. They came out with a bunch of really nice kind of creamy tones and I would love to feature those for you guys as well. So as soon as I saw color 230, I knew that I wanted to do some sort of floral watercolor type of design and because clear jelly has just recently launched um, a pretty little holiday stamping plate that has some open florals in it that I knew I could watercolor I definitely wanted to create some sort of design and this is what we came up with for it I'm gonna show you guys how now I'm going to start with Opal Oasis as the background for my watercolor. I really wanted to use this one because it is nice and light and I knew that I wanted the watercolor design on top of it to also be nice and light. So I did build this one up in my three coats to make it as opaque as I could get it. And I also painted this color on both the middle finger and the ring finger because that's where I knew I wanted the focus of my watercolor design to be. Taking some of the Fall in Love color, I put this on the pinky and the pointer finger, and if this was a real person, I would have done it on the thumb finger as well. And I just did my two thin coats to get this one built up nicely. I decided to take stamping color number 93, which is a milky white, because I knew I didn't want the stamping to be super bright, and it worked really well for the outline of these poinsettias. I decided to add some greenery to the poinsettias as well, using some of the leaf stamping images that are on that same plate. And after I have these images down where I want them, I'm going to prep my watercolor palettes. And the watercolor palettes that I'm using today are both from Michaels. They are very inexpensive, but they are also very low quality watercolor. They still work though. You don't need anything super fancy to do watercolor painting on top of nails. Uh, but I do prefer the Prima watercolor ones, except they are super, super pigmented. And I didn't want a really pigmented watercolor design, which is why I gravitate towards these ones so I have the pearly palette on the left and then I just have their basic watercolor one on the right and all I'm doing here is just dropping some water into the colors that I want to use so that they're all prepped and ready to go for me to grab easily the brush that I'm using is also just a watercolor brush from Michaels. I am just using the smaller head of one. So I am just getting my color on the nail right now and I'm realizing that it is too watery. So I'm grabbing way too much 
of the water from the palette. So I'm just gonna take a wipe and just kind of pull it off a little bit. And that's just a little tip that you can do if your water is way too watery on your nails. Also, side note, make sure you're working on top of a finished file nail or a matte top coat, which I just did a matte top coat over these. I just don't think I filmed it. Um, because if you're gonna <laughs> try and do watercolor over top of anything shiny, it's just gonna run right off. So just a little tip there. All I'm doing right now is just trying to get my color down on the nail. I find when I do watercolor painting, I like to build it up in layers. So I tend to make it really sloppy the first little coat. I go in and add more color, take more color away. If I'm finding that it's too pigmented in certain spots, I will get my brush a little bit wet and then dab it off on the cloth that you guys can see um, right underneath my work surface there. And then if I want it to be a little bit more pigmented, I just make sure my colors don't have a lot of water where I'm grabbing them. I really like the combination of the pearly palette here and the plain colors too. And for this particular water design, I do like that the colors are not super pigmented. So um, you'll notice that I go back and forth between the different nails often, and that's just because I'm giving the water a chance to kind of dry before I go back in and layer it up. And whenever I do watercolor painting, I go back and forth like this constantly because I'm just waiting to get like the right look that I'm going for. Sometimes I'll take some color away, sometimes I'll add more color and just wait until I'm getting a look that I really like. But after it's all nice and dried, I will usually go back in and add a little bit more of a pigmented um, color to it. And then that way it'll kind of outline it really nicely too. I'm also doing a combination of the pearly green and just a plain green for the leaves. But I found the leaves went on really nicely and I didn't have to play around with them too much, probably because they are a smaller little area. Had I used a brighter white to outline my stamping, I probably would have felt like this was done and I was okay with it. But because it was really light, I wasn't loving that the watercolor paint kind of took over the flower. So I wanted to go back in and stamp my white outline over top of the watercolor just to brighten it up a little bit. And off camera, I tried this so many different times and I could not get it to line up perfectly because it is just so intricate. So I decided to go in with the CJS sticky polish, which is a little bit brighter and do my very best to line it up. You guys are gonna notice that it is not lined up very well. And I'm also gonna take some of the Coco and Claire um, loose pigments that they have. This is in the signature Coco and Claire color. And I'm gonna stamp that immediately on top of the sticky polish after I stamp the outline. And I found this kind of camouflage the fact that it doesn't line up perfectly But if you look super super close, you're gonna notice that it doesn't line up perfectly I did want to add something really subtle to both the pointer finger and the pinky finger so I'm just gonna take some of these vines with the sticky polish as well and because I had some leftover chrome just go right over top of that with the chrome as well and this kind of gives it like an iridescent viney look on those two nails I really like how that turned out and then the last thing that I'm gonna do is take one of my I think it's an SS9 AB Swarovski crystal and put it in the center of the poinsettia just to again try and camouflage the fact that it doesn't line up perfectly. Last step is to just top gloss the entire nail design. I decided to keep these all shiny because I just thought it looked really nice to pull some of like the opal background and the iridescent from the chrome and I really like how it turned out. I think it's kind of like a winter poinsettia floral design and I'm happy with how it ended up. I love how subtle it is. I love how light it is and I really think that it pairs nicely together. So I hope you guys enjoyed the little tutorial in addition to the swatching. Comment below and let me know what you think of some of the new Coco and Claire gel polishes. Make sure you're following me on all of my social media and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!